to God. In Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 6. Okay, I need to open now. I've forgotten. Hebrews chapter 3 verse. Uh, sorry, one second. Oh, ah, there it is. Aha, there it is. Okay, so we are reading to verse 8, please. I want us to do it together. Thank you. Let me technically open it also myself here. You know, can we all try to read everybody if you don't mind? Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 6. There's a power of God in me. And I don't know what it, it can't just be just that it just came just to stay. I believe it's here for something or someone. I don't believe it just come here, just stay, and we just power, just stay. No, no, no. It's for something, for someone, for something. Move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Kai, 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 Kai. It's very strong. Kai, 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 Kai. Kai. Somebody's recovering. I don't know what you're, something was stolen from you, but you're recovering. Ah, it's so strong. Kaya, if you have spiritual sense, you will know that there's God in this place here. Ah, we bless you, Lord. I will try. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. Let's read to verse 8 together. My emphasis is verse 8, but I'd like us to, you know, just follow the context. One, two, go if you don't mind. One, two, go. But Christ as a son over his own house, that's this church, whose house are we? You know, that's talking about us, amen. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Did you see that? It says that we are Christ's house if we hold firm to the end, the hope and the confidence that is in him. Let's read on verse 7 now. Want to go. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you hear his voice, so his voice is coming. He says today, not tomorrow, in this service, talking to us. Listen, verse 8. He says, what did he say? Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation. In What is he trying to say? That means it is possible to harden your heart. That though the Holy Ghost is talking, you can harden your heart. I'm not listening. Or the Holy Ghost, though. Holy Ghost. I'm not the one that wrote this. He was, he was literally preparing them that when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. What does that mean? You only harden your heart to something you don't like. Maybe they're saying something you don't want. You just close up. <laughs> God is telling you this morning, I'm going to talk to you. You are my people. And he says, make sure when I'm talking, you don't harden your heart. Why is that so? Because if you harden his heart, God's word will not find space to walk. It will look like God did not speak. So he's telling us, first of all, that's why I believe it's the Holy Ghost. I want him to read that Hebrews. That, look, I'm going to talk to you today, and I want you not to harden your heart. Because that's what you can do. You can say, look, I'm not listening to all these things. I'm just, I'm just, that's not what he's doing me now. No. No, God knows what he's doing you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said God knows what he's, what he's doing you and he knows how to solve it. Yes, By the way, let me just profess over whatever he's doing you. Receive peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, because sometimes what, what he's doing some people is urgent. Yes, some is important, but some is urgent. I pray that that thing that you need as a miracle, you receive in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Let's make some progress. So let's go to Romans 12 quickly. Because I want to cover quite some grounds today. Please, if you're not around on Wednesday, you can try to get the message. It was a good one. It was a blessing. Um, and I just want to encourage you to connect with what I'm trying to speak to this morning. In Romans 12 from verse 1 and 2. Let's 1, 2, 3 in fact. Let's read it together. Romans 12, 1, 2, 3. Let's try. 1, 2, go. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then verse 3. Now let's quickly read that one now. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Thank you, Father. Today I want to speak to the subject, transformation from your mind. Transformation from the mind or from your mind. And why I want to do so is because there are stagnant lives that don't know how to move forward. That you are growing up does not mean you are going forward in life. Some people, the only thing getting better in their lives or growing in or increasing their life is their age. And I want to urge you to ensure that you are not deceived by being busy that you are growing better. Activity is not productivity. That you are busy does not mean you are in business. You want to check what you're doing to know that you are really doing what you should be doing at this time of your life. Believe it or not, the life of a Jew is calibrated in decades. At a certain age, you should be doing something. At another certain age, in fact, to be clearer, from age 0 to 10, you are being fed and being carried around by your parents like Jesus was. They take you to conferences. They take you everywhere. By 12, Jesus was already looking for liberty. He said, don't you know I should be around my father's business? By age... Um, 11 down to 20, you should be learning of your father's trade. You should be busy. By age 20 to 30 or 29, as the case might be, whichever way you want to calibrate it, you are supposed to be learning of your father's. In fact, you should be able to represent your father in businesses, go everywhere. If you check these people from Middle East, that's pretty much what they do. They, they, they can employ people, but their sons are learning of them. And then by age 30, there is the principle of this declaration of a son. So at age 30, a bona fide Jew who has been well trained by his parents in the trade that they belong to in their family is supposed to be brought outside and presented and stand upon a stone, is a stone significant upon a rock, and then declares that he is now, the father now points to him and says, this is it's called Bamisvir, something like that. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced it well. Bamisphere or something like that. Bamisphere is a Hebrew word, so I'm not Hebrew, you know. Just forgive me that it's Bamis something, you know. Bamisphere, something like that. And what that means is like the day of declaration that this is now my beloved son. Everybody, if you don't see me, you can relate with this guy. Do you understand? That was what happened to Jesus Christ at the um, baptism of John the Baptist. The Bible says, as he, it was not just an ordinary thing, you no, know, because God is his father. Do you understand? There was nobody to come and declare this is my beloved son. So God had to show up from heaven. The Bible says everybody had the voice that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. The first one did not have listened to him. The second one had listened to him. Now why am I saying this to us? Please listen. God wants us to grow, to move forward. The life you live right now is not the best life you can live. I know God has helped you. I know God has blessed you. But where you are is not all you can be. And I'm not trying to sound nice. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Now, more so, you might even be making progress in one area of your life. And the other areas of your life are defunct. So what we are looking to speak to today is that a life can move forward the way God wants your life to move forward. That process of movement from point A to point B is called transformation. Like a butterfly comes from egg. What's the process? Egg, papa, pupa, lava, and adult. Is that what it is? Yes. Caterpillar and adult. Okay, thank you. So there are about five stages. The egg comes out. When we see the egg, it looks like one irritating thing. Then it breaks out. It becomes, is it pupa? Am I correct? Yeah, pupa. 
Then it becomes lava. The one that most people don't like is the caterpillar. When it starts to crawl. You will never believe that crawling thing can become a butterfly. But it has grown. It's no longer an egg. If you leave it at that stage, you will never see the full potential. Today, I want to bring out the better potential of your life. By the word of God. That there is more to your life, sir. And you can move from one level to another level. Who would have ever thought that water can become ice? Nobody would have ever thought about it. That same ice, believe it, if they reverse it, can become vapor. It will surprise you that the state you are, these women that help us understand this better, when you see a woman go through makeup, you'll be shocked. That wonderful. Is this you? You will be asking yourself, no, this can't be me. And I don't mean that really, I mean it for a very good reason. They change, you'll be like, ah, ah. Sir, the same way you appreciate the outward beauty of a woman is the same way life can appreciate your own beauty. Your life can become beautiful. We're born into this world. And believe me, this world has already been conscripted with a lot of culture, background, structure, that if you're not careful, you will just live like the way the world has programmed you. You just believe I came, I was born in Okwebi. When I grew up in Okwebi, they took us to Zaria. From Zaria, then I did not know what to do. I just, you, just, you will just live life like with explanations. But one day, God is hoping that you will listen and not harden your heart. And that you will receive what someone is telling you as an expression of his love to you. Maybe you've been coming to church casually before, but today is a different one. God is going to transform your life. There is such a thing called transformation. It is when something or someone evolves from one position to another position. It can be outwardly or internally. It can be outwardly or internal. And God wants us to keep evolving. The Bible says that the path of the just, what did he say? Is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Some people know about this discussion and what they have taken about God is the side of God that speaks just to their spirituality. Some people are so spiritual that that's all that has progressed in their lives. That spiritual person, you know, I used to joke about it. Those that used to enter buses before, I don't know if they still do it. You will see some people, they enter bus crucial. Eleven, yo. Ah, ah, you wonder what's going on here. They want to preach. When they finish preaching, you will know that they need offering. And they have done well with spirituality, but they've not done well with finance. So, and you know that when you are broke, it will look like God is not with you. So some people understand it and some people have done well because they don't want to fail. They go for only finance, they leave spirituality until demons start to walk and do rendezvous in their parlor. <laughs> so you cannot just appreciate that you are making only one-sided progress. That would be imbalanced. It's like having Im imbalanced diets, like they call it. You will be quashokod physically if you have imbalanced diet. That's the same way some lives are quashokod. Because they only have one-sided progress. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? You can't be feeding only one side of your life and think you are normal. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why you see some people who are doing well financially, but their problem is they lack mental health. They now hear rich man commit suicide. You'll be like, please give me the money. Why? <laughs> if you don't know what to do with it, just bring it. But guess what? There are areas in our own lives too that we need to improve upon. Today, God is saying it is time to transform. That the people that knew you before will no longer recognize you the way you are because you would have moved forward. That caterpillar does not stay at a caterpillar. It moves and becomes, suddenly one day just wakes up, poof! And then the wings show up. And they don't just show up for showing up. Guess what? They move! And they move around. The same egg that was irritating. The same pooper that we couldn't look at. The same lava. The same caterpillar breaks open and becomes a flying butterfly. So beautiful. What, does, what happened to that egg? What happened to 
that pupa, larva, caterpillar, before it transforms into a flying being. It, it, it can literally reach everywhere. In fact, it is said from science that when a butterfly, you know, flaps its wings, it has an effect in nature. A displacement butterfly, oh, that just come, cha, 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 cha. They say it has an effect far away in India. <coughs> butterfly, yes. What is my point? There is a better life for you. And I'm trying to announce to you today that it will happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible now tells us very clearly that we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that means that the transformation does not start from outside, it starts from inside. We say this way that you cannot travel within and not travel without. You cannot make progress inside your heart and it will not manifest around your life. A changed life does not begin outside, it begins inside. And that means that you, the first thing you need to do is to first of all take control of your mind. You know, some people don't have their minds together. That song, that's a song. It's a song and then it's a scripture. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Some people don't have everything within them again. Because one mind is thinking about Bessie. One mind is thinking about Romoke. One mind is thinking about uh, my father. One mind, their minds are scattered. Some are even in debt to several ladies. They've been deceiving, they will marry. Those ones are angry at them and their minds are not at peace. Some of us are listening today and you're just hoping that God will just do a miracle in your life. I want to say something to you. The miracle that God celebrates the most is not necessarily an outward miracle. It's the transformational miracle of the mind. Because that's God's program method to guarantee that the desired outcome of your life will happen. You need to get control of your mind once again. It is God's systematic method of changing a man's life. You can interpret things, you know, in the way you want to interpret them. But God's interpretation is what will give us God's kind of outcome. Now, this is important for me to establish that in your life today, there are different aspects. Yesterday, I was sharing in church about how everybody has a position in life. As you stand like this, as you are standing, there is a position of your life that goes forward. What does it mean for you to go forward? For you to move from position A to a desired position B. Underline the word desired position B. That means you are here today. This man is still coming, Mr. Shea, since you are already beside me. Let me just use you. This man last year was not married. Amen. <laughs> he was very single. I, I, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Two years ago, he was almost not even sure of what will become of his marital destiny. When we say he has moved forward, it's not that he moved from here to here, but his life has moved forward. If he's feeling form now, and they say status, you know he's no longer going to look at single again. If, if he marks single by, by mistake, they'll say he lying, he's lying. Am I correct? Yes. What am I saying? Your life can move in a way that you are still standing straight. You are still here, but something has moved in you. What really moved is not because he put a ring in his hand. It's because his mind is now conscious, I am married. Do you understand what they say here? I can remove this ring and I'm still married. So it's not about ring. When I say he got married, I, I don't mean he did party. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that something has happened. He's now conscious. I mean, I was yabbing him the other day. She laid that I would chat. That will answer me with words. He's now using reaction. Me. Amy. Rea reaction. I now asked him. He says, Sir, the new level. Sir. He said, Amy. Amy. What upgrade? That's it. When you get a new job, the job is not what has happened to you. It is that something has happened in your mind. What God really wants to speak to is how you think. As we are seated across board here, there are different kinds of thinking here. That movement between that foolish thinking to good thinking is called transformation. So you have not stood up from here. You've not changed your shirt, but something has changed in you. 
The one that you couldn't do for yourself is what God did for you to save yourself from hell. God gave you a spirit. So all of us that are born again now, believe it or not, there is a change that has happened to you. That is arguably the most important one because that's the one that will determine your eternity. But the rest of change that must happen to you is you that will determine it. It's like going to a buffet party. You don't, nobody forces you to eat too much in a buffet party. Some people just take some, sti- <laughs> my man, I, God bless you, Jesus. Actually. You know, my man, I were at a function, I mean, went for um, breakfast in an hotel and she snapped me and um, <laughs> one of her friends said, ah, ah, I, look, I was eating tomatoes, um, you know, nice, sweet, you know, small, small thing. My plate was very red and green, you know, this healthy living. The guy said, your, pa- your husband will be left like this. I, and she said, of course, it's not, it's not like people like you. The point is that, listen, the transformation that happens between the exposures you have. You see, that's why God gives you exposure. Gives you exposure. Nobody will force you to eat so much. It's exposure he will give you. It's exposure he will give you. It's exposure he will give you. He can't force you like a buffet. Eat too much. No. It's you, the food is there. It's you that say, I will take only this one. That's how life is, though. The wisdom is there. The progress is possible. But it's you that will determine how much we take. Now, I want to speak to some mindsets that need to change. And I want to suggest things that can help you change some mindsets. Do you get what I just said? So, there are some mindsets that need to be transformed. That really, they are the things keeping us small. For example, there are mindsets that we say sometimes. Things like, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Have you had that statement before? Have you had those type of proverbs before? A bird at hand or in hand is worth two in the bush. You know that it's amazing that that statement can be both true and false at the same time. There are things that you are holding on to. Ah, let me just hold this cleaner job. Then I'm going to go and develop a certificate. I'm not sure what the certificate will become. That is a bird in hand, and he says it's worth two. Like no, there's another one is to say, the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. There is no way a devil will be better than an angel. Do you agree with me? Yes. There's another very powerful one, which is very interesting. Heaven help those who help themselves. These clauses are things that have programmed our lives in a certain, you know, method. That you live your life and say, "Uh, don't bite more than you can chew. That is not consistent with faith. It will sound very nice. You you can even give your children. Don't bite more than you can chew. That child will never achieve greatness. And they came from a loving father. That, that your father or your parents does not mean they know everything. Don't put the burden of your success on your parents. It's your duty as an adult to learn information. To learn what will make your life progress. Are you here? I'm trying to say here. Eventually they will thank you for it. They did their best to the level they could. Nobody's blaming anybody's parents here. Thank God I have parents too. Although they are dead. But you know, I mean, they are my parents still. They try their best. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? So you need to ask yourself. You know, some people are very, very funny. Because they need to secure the next six things that we mentioned to you, they just associate with any kind of mumu friend. This one is not even their parents, so, you know. And it's interesting that those type of mindsets that keep them small or keep us small, so that I don't sound like I'm talking to you, but I'm not part of that category, to be honest, but just so that I sound like we're talking together, that keep people small, are things that some people hold very dearly. Ah, me and my friend, we've been together for since 1800. Oga, if that friend is going to put you in destruction, better change. Better change. There are mindsets that keep some people small. There are backgrounds that keep some people small. Your background did not allow you to be a, a relatable person. Your lack of social skills now is, is, is causing people not to like you. You are beginning to wonder what is my problem. Oh Lord, when will you answer me? Change your social skills. Change your social skills. You know another complication for some people before I go into the six things I want to mention. Some people think they know. You know that state is very funny. 
the person that thinks he knows and does not know that he does not know as he ought to know. And, and that, that's what is painful. Many of us sometimes are Christians. For example, somebody now believes that he knows Jesus. But does not believe that giving is a principle of Jesus. He believes that, ah, ah, God will bless me. We should use our common sense. You will speak in tongues. We will love you, but you'll be very broke in life. That's the truth. When others are giving, your hand is never up. It will look like as if you are practical. It's a matter of time. You will soon see the distance between where you are and your foolishness. You have not moved. It's a trap, especially when you believe you have a relationship with the Lord and you are not committing any sin. You would think you are doing well. But you now start to see that what converts a man's status that from your very eye you see a man moving from one level to another financially is his generosity. It just looks like the more generous you are, the more God lifts you up. I don't know how to explain And let me tell you something. Make no mistake, sir. Look around. Ask who the financier is that is financing this ministry. No, just with all sincerity and humility. Why I say this is not to harass anybody. It's to tell you that there are some people, sometimes it's even our parents. Better be wise, my, my son, my, my daughter. That money you are giving is, is everything you are giving. They will be grateful to you tomorrow that you are the one that built them house. So. But how you got there, they don't know. The transformation, the transformational power of information. Let me quickly say that what transforms our lives, therefore, is information. Please write that after me. Say, say that after me. Say, information transforms our lives. Please let me say to your neighbor, say information is the transformational power of God. Let's say it one more time like though we can say it better than that. Say information is God's tool for transformation. That means when God wants to transform your life, he gives you information. Like the word is, is in formation. He changes your life because he knows that once he can click it into your mind, he can get it done. You know, I, um, this dangerous man, Adolf Hitler, you know this, have you heard that name before? How many of us have heard the name Adolf Hitler before? Okay, you probably want to Google it. I'm sure many of us have heard, but you just can't remember or something. Adolf Hitler was using a very powerful skill to win wars. He programs the mind of his victims. Tells them, I'm coming to destroy you. I will rape your children. I will rape your wives. I will he sends fear to program lives. The same way you can send faith to program your mind. Yes. Because before Adolf comes, everybody is paralyzed already. What I'm doing to you today in this message is to reprogram that mind. As I'm talking to you, the principle of life is very abundant. One of them says, your hands cannot touch what your mouth has disqualified you from. There's no way you will see success where in your mind what you are seeing is failure. Your inside will catch up with outside. If people are celebrating you, celebrating you, celebrating you, making you feel good, after a while, what is really inside will catch up. That's why they give you money. In a short while, the money is finished. You say, what happened to me? It is inside that caught up with the money. That's why the greatest thing is not anything external. In fact, anything physical, from the day it shows up physical, starts to depreciate. So God in his wisdom does not keep important things physical. The day God brought Jesus out, they killed him in 33 years. 33 years. <laughs> Imagine God now coming physical himself. Because he had to replace himself as son. If God show up, man will kill him again. Anything that shows up on the surface of this earth depreciates. A good car, I've driven a few. Let me tell you something. That car, as you drive it out, return it. So I want to return it. Just try that experiment after buying it. It will never be for the price you paid. You have not left the place, so Never. Anything, you know, our some people are traders generally. You buy something, I say you want to return it. Oga, okay, you're on your own. No? 
Because if you lean on anything physical, if the secrets of your wealth or your life or your success or your happiness is physical, if they can steal that physical thing, your joy is gone forever. That's why you must retain the success of your life in intangible things. In things that cannot be touched easily. What are the possible mindsets that we are addressing today? Number one, the mindset of failure. The mindset of failure. So many people are encumbered with the fear of failure. They might not say it, but they are afraid that they will fail. They might not say it, but they are not confident that they will succeed. Number two, the failure of not being deserving. Or the fear, beg your pardon, of not being deserving. The mindset of not being deserving. That I don't deserve this thing. It's different from failure. Some people don't believe they deserve to buy a good car. Some people don't believe that they deserve a good husband. Maybe because they've done some crazy things in the past. You know, they'll say, is it, is it my kind that they used to give such things to? You know, such dirty statements. So, the, the, the mindset of not being deserved, and I'm, I'm particularly speaking to believers today, so that in case you notice I'm talking to believers, I'm conscious that some people, their problem is not sin anymore. It's not just careless living. It's the mindset that govern them. The other mindset you need to cater to is the mindset of poverty. Poverty. Poverty is not in the lack of money, please. Poverty is a mindset. The major difference between the poor and the rich is not money. The rich and the poor go broke. Uh -uh, there are rich men that are broke. There are rich men that are broke. I've met some. I'm telling you. I've met, I'm one self too. I go broke sometimes. <laughs> yes, by God's grace. Yes, ma'am. But I can tell you, is that rich men, their mindset is that there will always be a way out. Poverty believes everything is money. The reason why I'm like this is that I don't have money. Poverty is a spirit that is conscious of lack and the inability to create a means. I'm telling you. You see, a rich man does not necessarily have to have money. There's such a thing called social capital. He can invest in his social capital that his person is enough. People will give him money before he even gets. There are people that they give proper, you know, goods without money. Take when you finish selling, bring us. It's called social capital. A rich man does not live carelessly. A rich man is honest. He knows the value of honesty. That if I don't keep honesty, nobody will trust me again. You see how po you see how poverty can can work. There might be wives here who all their reason for being happy in marriage is that the man has money. The day he shows appearance of not having like this, you see their next character. It is not because they are devils. It's because of the mindset they carry. Therefore, I say like this. You are only as beautiful as your mind. Yes. You are only as beautiful as your mind. The real you is who your mind says you are. So I've mentioned failure. What else did I mention? I mentioned three. Eh, of not deserving. Number three is what? Poverty. The fear of... Now, I know one that is very terrible is the fear of death. People have... Uh, you see them walking with this mindset and they just, they just submit everything to wretchedness. No, 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 no. You are not a hopeless person. No devil brought you to this world. No devil can take you away before your time. These are mindsets. Unfortunately, if they stayed with you, it's fine. So of us grow with this mindset and feed our children with it. Ah, don't, don't trust anybody. Trust no man. Trust no man. And they are saying it without realizing that they are also a man. The child will look at you and say, I trust no man. I cannot trust you, daddy. He grows up, he cannot give his parents anything. He's buying, you know, things, chopping life, showing it. And his parents are in the lungu. Because trust no man. No man is happy for you. You have told your children long enough that. And without knowing it, you are living it. Some of us is, is ah, you know, just do what you can do. Don't, don't stretch yourself. Oh, God, stretch yourself. 
the power of his stretched life is that he never returns to the spiritual size. Like elastic. When you are stretched, the better version of you shows up. You will not die now. You will not die. Some of us just stay where, okay, okay, you know, for, funny enough. And our mindset, for example, is this funny mindset that I am who I am. Just leave me. That's how I am. Oh, God, you are deceiving yourself. Under circumstances of standard temperature and pressure, we will see the new version of you. Let lion show up. We will not believe that you have led. You, this you, that I am who I am. You. Let lion show up. Or you hear, Qua! <laughs> ah, ah, you will never know how powerful fear can be. I, I, I've said this before. I had a roommate. He might be watching me now. You can laugh. It's okay. The guy heard that there were, you know, uh, uh, some violent boys around the corner and all that. I saw this adult man, very giant, hair on his chest, hanging under the bed. I, 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 did not, I did not understand it. He was not a victim, just fear. The paralysis of fear. Now, why am I saying these things? People of God, please listen. All these mindsets that I've mentioned and more, they almost all of them seek to address six major things. Can we just quickly try them? Six major things. Number one, our identity. Number one, our identity. They want to address what, how does your identity take shape? Is your identity described by fear, circumstances, community, culture, or just an opinion? What is your true identity? What else does this fear, yours, what will I call it now, mindset that tries to address us, so to say, is number two, your security. Your security. Those things are the areas where the, the ad, attack of culture and community, if left to itself, you will lose the value of your life. Your identity. What's your identity? As a lady, who are you? Are you your makeup? Are you your cosmetics? Who are you when everything is stripped away? As a man, who are you really? Who are you? As you stand, who are you? What do you stand for? What can we identify you for? Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? Because this month, God is changing your life. Please help me say a better amen. amen. The transformational power of God. You see, some of us come to church and we just feel that, look, 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 this church is not my church. God is changing your life. You are struggling. This ignorance of yourself is causing a lot of people damage. And you are growing older every day. That's why I said some people, the only thing growing in their life is their age. Just their age. And the wiser you are, the better you live. And funny enough, the thing about wisdom is that only the future can justify wisdom today. I'll marry that man. I'll marry that man. I'll marry that man. I'll marry that man. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. Only the future can show you that you were foolish. Only the future. But by that time, is regret. Are, are you getting what I'm saying here? Why must your life be used as an experiment? Why not learn from wisdom? Somebody's learning today in Jesus' name. Number three thing that this fear comes to attack on us is not only our identity, it's not only our security, it's our liberty. Ah, have you ever been held confined in a place that they did not allow you to go out? Has it ever happened to you? <laughs> May it not happen to you. You will know the value of freedom if they hold you in a cell. Just to stay over the counter. <laughs> I told you of a plane. It, they, nobody arrested me, but I told you of the, the story that happened to me. I was to fly a plane, and then the man of God I was to preach for called me inside the plane. My seat was 12A. I can't forget that day. I just told the cabin crew. The man just called me, man of God, I, I, are, you still in, are you still in Abuja? I said, yes. It was even Posey now. What am I even saying? Do you remember Posey? It was Posey. Man of God, are you still in Abuja? Please come down from the plane. Ha, ha. I said, come down from plane care. It has never happened to me. I said, I should come down. He said, man, oh God, please come down. God wants you to talk to us today. <laughs> ah, me, I, of course, you can trust me. I said, sir, I'm coming down. <laughs> they, they were about to close the, I said, I'm coming down. Open this plane. They now took me downstairs. And as I got down, I was trying to speak English. They said, sir, you cannot go anywhere until this plane lands in Lagos. I said, why? They said, to prove that you did not plant anything in the plane, we have to hold you in custody. I've never heard of it before. 
So joke, joke, they escorted your man of God. They were just taking you. I was following too. I seen a police police office with a go for airports. Well, the point I want to make is that I was held in custody. That one hour flight, it was like punishment. To hold me from my liberty. A hold me. I can't go anywhere. Oh, God, you can't go anywhere, sir. So, what am I trying to say? Your liberty is another thing that you should cherish. Don't let negative things be sold to you. Your liberty. Some, some things that you want to do, when you think that your liberty can be in prison, you should not do them. Mindsets that can confine you. And I'm speaking to the six, seven things that the enemy is attacking. Number one is what? Our identity. Number two is what? Our security. Number three is what? Our liberty. Guess what number four is? Sanity. Sanity. What Satan is fighting us with is sanity. He doesn't want you to keep a sound mind. He wants you to be disturbed and anxious at the least. Over everything. Every, you know some people can worry for Africa. Have you met such people? They, there's no need to worry. They just have to worry. What will happen now? What will happen now? They just worry. Where will you get money for next year's rent? First of all, finish this year. Do you know what I'm talking about? Worry, 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 worry. The Bible tells us clearly, and I'll explain something. Let me quickly, quickly run, please. Number five, please, are we together here? Number five thing is our prosperity. Our prosperity. That's the next thing Satan wants to get at us. Our prosperity. That's our survival instincts. Number six is our posterity. And number seven, our integrity. Everything has T, 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 T to the end. Let's run through it again. Number one, identity. Can we run it together, everybody? Church, one, two, go. Number one is what? Identity, security, liberty, sanity, prosperity, posterity, and integrity. Let's run through it one more time. Church, let's get it together. One, two, go. Identity, security, liberty, sanity, prosperity, posterity, and integrity. You know, let me just quickly run with what mindsets come with each, each of them. On your integrity, what Satan wants to sell to you is shame. He wants you to be ashamed. You know, when you are a person of poster, prosperity and, all, and, post, and integrity, beg your pardon. The next one on posterity, he wants to give your life meaninglessness. On your prosperity, what Satan wants to make you bother about is your survival, your pride, and your shame. On your sanity, what he wants to do, deal with is your soundness of mind, your thinking pattern. Number three, uh, number what's next, whatever it is, your liberty he wants to attack your freedom, make you confined and limited. On your security, he wants you to have a sense of fear permanently. And on your identity, he wants you not to know who you are. Identity is one major issue that some of us don't realize we are responding to. Say, that's how I am. That's how my parents are. It's not true. You can reinvent yourself. Now look up at me, people of God, please, if you don't mind. We can reinvent who we are. Whatever you are today is the circumstance of your history. But your future can be changed from today. You can change. Now, how do we begin to gravitate towards change? Number one is take control of your mind. Please follow me here today. Take control of your mind. Begin to, uh, you know, regard your mind and take yourself more seriously. Take good control of your mind. Take control of your mind. Don't let your mind just be wandering. Take control of your mind. We are all victims of this society. The society has programmed all of us through television. Society has programmed all of us through our parents. Society has programmed all of us through the community. But you can take control of your mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying, people of God? You can own your mind again. You can own your mind again. And that's the power of what it means to be in Christ Jesus. That your mind is no longer vulnerable to your mistakes. Your mind is no longer vulnerable to people's predictions of you. You can own your life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe what I'm saying, can I hear your big amen, please? Yes, you can. Some people are held back in two years ago. Some people, they are still in five years ago. The last heartbreak, the rape, the experience. Oh, God, you can own a life again, sir. 
You don't have to let your history define your future. Can I hear your amen, people of God? You know, some people are so unforgiving that they cannot forgive themselves. They, they, they made a mistake and they will never leave that spot. They berate themselves more than necessary. Can you imagine somebody committing suicide just because he made a mistake? No. Your life is not over. And I'm not trying to sound nice. I'm speaking prophetically to someone here today. Your life is not over. You don't have to hold yourself back to that state. You can go forward, people of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number two, submit your heart to Jesus. This world is so precarious, so vulnerable, that we need spiritual power to survive on earth. Everybody who lives at a level in this life, you will know that there's a level you get to in life. If you don't hold something, something will hold you. You need to hold something. I know you have survived free with free thinking. One day you will meet what they call malady of the mind. You will wonder which drug you will take to touch your conscience. Which drug can anybody take to touch a conscience? There's no part of your body called conscience. <laughs> Then you will know the value of the blood of Jesus. When you start to see things running in front of you like this, and yet, there's nothing in front of you. Only you can see it. Then you will know the power and the mystery of godliness. You cannot totally handle that mind. Let Jesus be the center of it. Because in this world, if you live long enough, you will know that this world is spiritual. Come on, ring. Somebody can do something to your ring, go touch you like this, and your life will not remain the same. You may it never happen to you. So you want to have some spiritual understanding. Any life can change. Once it can keep hearing my voice, sir, you will change, sir. Do you know the temptation is to just think that ah, it's money I need. Oh, God, that's the problem. How much of that money can you need? I'm telling you how to reproduce the money. You know, some of us think that we know what we are doing. You don't know what you are doing. You don't. You have done it long enough. It has not worked. <laughs> You've just been guessing. If I feel hustle like this, you know, say one way or the other, man must work. Man must, you, what a life. What a life. What a living. How long do you want to do that? Is that what you want to transfer to your children? You just want to. That's what makes some people enter robbery. They've tried everything and they get to. You know, the lack of direction is the mother of frustration. When they don't know what to do again, they start to say, I'm coming. this country is not good. This country, some will say, I want to jackpot. They will now enter Atlantic Ocean and start to swim to, to Saudi Arabia. They now reach there. They now use them for slave trade. They now start to do video. Please help us. Help, help, help. No. Your life is destined to succeed. Can I hear your amen on that? Yes. Stop fluking your destiny. You know what fluke is? Stop guessing if I will succeed. You can set your life in motion. That under constant movement, under this direction, you will arrive at destiny. Yes. What am I saying? I'm saying that you should give your life to Jesus Christ. And I'm saying it as an evangelist of Jesus this morning, that without him, you will have big problems succeeding. Number three, what do you do to transform your mind? You need to gather information. Number one, I said what? Take control of your mind. Number two, commit that mind to Jesus. Number three is information. L let me say clearly that the entrance of Jesus into your life does not mean the final transformation of your life. It's only an entry into superior spirit. Because if you don't gather information, you will still be deformed. If you don't gather information, you will still be stranded, even though you are a Christian. That's why some unbelievers don't respect some, of, some Christians, not people like us. Not people like you also. Praise God. Because you are informed. Am I correct here? Now, you see, how do you want to succeed without information? Just tell me. Just because you have a good conscience. You do not buy at anybody, Jay. So nobody should bat here, Jay. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You, you, I, said, I have a clean conscience, so I've not done anything. My chest is like this, white. Oh, God. It's not by that, oh. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, some people just believe that since I've not spot anybody, so I will succeed. It's not like that. If, you, if nobody's trying to spot your own hunger, we catch you. Hunger. He knows your house. May you never stay there in Jesus' name. I'm simply saying it takes information to have a formation. 
If you don't gather information, the Bible says my people are destroyed not because Satan is skillful, but because of their ignorance. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12 and 13, it tells us the same thing, that my people are held captive for their ignorance. So I'm saying information is the way. Information. Number one, I said what? For transformation, I said number one is what? Take control of your mind. Number two, I said what? Hand it over to Jesus Christ. Number three, I said what? Gather, read information. The wiser you are, the better you live. The wiser you are, the better you live. The wiser you are, the better you live. Number four, because of time, is take association seriously. People have died just because they are associated with wrong people. Proverbs 13, 20, it says that, that he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools will not be foolish, he will be destroyed. Some of us have caught sicknesses, diseases, situations just because of wrong association. Wrong association can weaken the power of any information you gather. If you have a friend that does not believe in generosity, if you stay with that friend long enough, you will not believe in generosity too. If you have five millionaires and you, you are one of them, you, I mean, you have a friend of five millionaires, you are the sixth millionaire. It's a matter of time. If you have five foolish, foolish friends, you are the sixth. If It's a matter of time. Yeah. What am I saying? Your association can determine your elevation in life. Your attitude can determine your altitude. How you think. You know there are some wives that makes their husband less in stewardship towards God. That make their husband say, what is all this God? What, what is it? I beg. Maybe we know they go there. Or tight. Ah, tight. What are you tighting? You know, see pastor suit. You know, you will just wonder who is teaching you this demonic thing. I know the problem. Let me just say something to you. If ever a gospel gets into your understanding, God has blessed you. Because like Pharaoh's heart, some people's heart is hardened. No matter what you say, their hearts don't close. They don't lock. Nothing you say. They go to church. And they go to the church. Oh. Some of them are even ushers. But their heart is locked. On this generosity, man must work. I know how to plan my life. Look at it well. Look at it well. You see, listen to me. Look at me, people of God. Let me say something to you. Listen, please look, look at this as I, as I wrap up my thoughts. Please listen to this. Do you know that God's biggest wish is that you are no longer responsible for yourself? That he's the one responsible for you. Please, this is what I'm about to say. Each time you are the one worrying about how to live your life, it's proof God is not involved. Listen, that's why prayer is a proof that you depend on someone bigger than you. When you don't pray, it's proof you depend on yourself. That you can take everything you are in charge. Now, what God is saying to you today is that he wants to change your life. But the Bible says that you don't put new wine into old wine skin. So, he, he's saying that I need, you need to drop some mindsets. And the biggest mindset you must embrace today is, Lord, take over my life. From that position, it starts to give you information. It starts to give you friends. It starts to give you mentors that will be involved in your success. Some of us are, are going through stuff, you know. Maybe you are planning to write an exam or you need a promotion or your wife is not treating you right or your husband is not doing you right or you are not able to provide enough for your family. Let me tell you, today is the day of transformation, sir. Some of them might be sick here. You can't keep sickness in your front and expect to see wholeness. So this is what I'll close with today. The fourth thing. So we've talked about process of transformation. What did I say? Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four is what? Take your association. Select your friends. And number four. Um, number next. That should be five. Put the right pictures into your mind. This is very powerful. You can never touch what you have not seen. If you do, you will lose it. Your mind must see it. 
it is what your mind is seeing that your life will be living. It's not what you think that, okay, I hope, no. You must know, for example, you cannot be seeing yourself dying in a coffin and expect that you will not soon die. Even though all of us are greeting ourselves now, but in your heart, you know that you are seeing death. That's why Satan serves you pictures of failure very often. Because he knows that a life will gravitate towards the picture it can feed on. No jazz needs to be involved. If they can constantly put the picture of something in front of you, you will soon find yourself there. <laughs> Go and cut pictures of the next car you want to buy. Just the day you cut that picture, you will start to see the car all over. Am I correct? Yes. What do you think is going on? Life recognizes whoever pays attention to it. Life. I, I, I use life because I mean life. I don't want to say God. Life. Recognizing whoever pays attention. You just go and cut a car. Just notice, just as you are sitting now, just think of one car. You will see that that car you decided on. When you go outside, it's what you'll be seeing all over. It's called the personal recognition system. Life recognizes anybody who can pay that attention to it. So that's why you need to cut right pictures into your sight. Because some of us, our minds are stronger than other minds. The shortest imagination of your heart comes into reality so soon. Some of us, you need to also watch your words. You cannot be saying rubbish and be expecting to see neatness. No, it doesn't work. Today, whatever Satan has been whispering into your head, I command it out in the name of Jesus Christ. I thought I was going to hear a better amen there. So, transformation of the mind begins with those things I just listed. I've tried to highlight a few things. What Satan is attacking, your identity, your security, your sanity, your prosperity, your posterity, your integrity, and all that I mentioned. That's what Satan wants to attack with mindsets. As you go from this place today, you need to be fortified in the spirit. Knowing that from today, you will not allow any kind of things enter your mind. I close with this scripture and then we rise to pray. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. So, cut clear pictures into your sights. Paste them by your bed. Put them on your phone screen saver. Like for example now, I've cut the picture of a mega church into my phone and my laptop and everywhere I go to. One time I wanted to pay attention to my family. I chose my wife's picture standard on my phone. Constantly seeing it. Those things program your mind to be beautiful. So don't use your space just to do rubbish. Your WhatsApp space, the status, just post rubbish. No, post the beauties that you desire. Post the kind of life you want to live. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, let's read it together, everybody. One, two, go. Everybody, one, two, go. Everybody, if you don't mind, everybody, one, two, go. Let's go, one, two, go. Oh, come on, let's read it together, everybody. One more time, I think we can do better than that. One, two, go, everybody. One, two, go. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That means you should guard what you watch. Guard what you watch. You can't watch pornography and expect to see uh, excellence in life like that. No. You have compromised what you have put into your heart. Are you hearing what pastor is saying this morning? We might not be there. If the picture in your mind is insufficiency, that's what you'll be living. If what you're seeing is yourself dead by the time you're at a certain age, that's what will happen. Not because Satan is powerful. But that's what Satan keeps serving you every day. Some of us, you enter a marriage, you don't see yourself married. You don't see yourself married. That's how you will live unmarried even though you are married. So it says, guard your heart with all diligence. Don't take it for granted. There are some things you are watching. Mama and I were trying to watch a film yesterday. You know, as we just said, I said this film, Mama, are you up for this? And she said, no. Nah. I said, oh yeah, off, 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 off. off. Oh, it was day before yesterday, that's Saturday. Are we? Are we? No, that's Friday night stroke. It's yesterday, was, yesterday was Saturday. I got home late. He said, off, 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 off. This one is not what we want. Don't just say anything, anywhere, belly face. No, you might be drinking poison without knowing. So what am I saying? Guard your heart. Are you here? I'm trying to say here, don't only serve to protect your heart from evil, 
make sure you go after what will feed your spirit. No, I'm not just talking about Bible. Please, did you hear what I just said? Come on, can I hear an amen, please? I'm not just talking about Bible because some of us now, we can't hear any other thing except from pastors. I just think all that pastor is saying is Bible. I'm not talking about Bible. I'm talking about even the films you watch. I'm talking about even the people you talk to. Guard your heart. Don't, 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 don't be partial. Don't be, don't be excusing somebody's indolence on you. As a sister, someone just hit your bum pa. Hey, I was just playing with you. Oh, God, are you okay? You say, we was just playing, just playing. We was just playing. You're enjoying it. That's how it starts. Listen to me. You must learn to react to things that defy your destiny. And the way you react will show the level of understanding you have about that future. Not just a stop it, oh, stop it, oh, stop it, oh. Uh, that one even sounds like do more to a man's head. It sounds like you are ready for more. Do you see what I'm saying? Please, people of God, there are millionaires seated here today. There are billionaires seated here today. I'm not just talking casually. I prayed before I came for this meeting. There are billionaires seated here. I don't want you to just wish it. I want you to become it. Are you here? I'm trying to say here. Now, listen to me. Never be too big for where God is blessing you. Never. If God is blessing you in this ministry and you are casualizing without testifying, you are doing a very bad thing. Some of us have been healed from sicknesses. When I prayed for you, you did not testify. Those type of things makes the situation look worse. Because just to tell us that when something goes out, it says the spirit goes out for a while and comes back stronger. There are many of us here, when I was praying, the spirit was said, I've done things for your people. They are not testifying. I was very happy when mama was saying that thing. They first said that, please, if God has blessed you, make sure you testify. Because your testimony confirms that God is present in the midst. Some of us here, we know that we're in trouble and God saved us. And God delivered you from shame. Can I urge you to testify? Don't be too big for where God is blessing you. Don't be too big for where God is blessing you. Stay there. That's the community. That's the house God has chosen for you. You know, some people behave in a way, they will ask you, who is your father? Who is, you don't have home training. That's how some people don't have spiritual home training. They don't know what to do. But from today, I see God changing your story. Right now, I want us to rise to our feet and begin to prophesy. I want us to prophesy into our lives. The picture of your future that you see. Are you here? I'm trying to say here today. That you, so, so, for example, now, you, you see, healing, for example. I'm writing a book. I hope you'll be blessed. Faith all sides. You know? And, and what I see is that somebody can be, you know, one of the worst things that can happen to people. Let me tell you a story. He went, this person went to a medical doctor to go and do a test. I mean, a laboratory test. And then they said that you have HIV. Please listen, oh, you have, it is many years ago, HIV. The HIV that they confirmed in his blood, as soon as they said it, everything in his spirit, you know, crashed. He did not even seek for a second opinion. He went home from that place depressed. You see that his life has been transformed negatively. Information, no. With his head down. And in the next two weeks, this guy emaciated became a joke of himself. The man that did the laboratory test called him after those two weeks and said, sir, please, can you come? On his knees, the laboratory test man went. He said, please, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. It was another person's result. Can you forgive us? So that means it was not HIV that reduced the man. It was the mindset. That's how some of us, you think you are carrying sickness. You are carrying that sickness. You are believing that the doctor's report is right and unfallible. I've come to give you a better report. You are the healed of Christ Jesus. I know some of you might not say amen because you don't know the consequence of sickness. But please, I want to repeat it. You are the healed of Christ Jesus. I want to repeat it the third time. No sickness will stay in that your body anymore in the name of Jesus. So what do you do? Don't just say pastor has prophesied. Begin to eat the word of God. I, that, that it, the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes. I, not, not I will be healed. I am healed. That conversation must happen with you till it clicks in your spirit. Till that you see a doctor's report and says, sir, doctor, this is not possible. 
I'm telling you, sir. You are not doing Obojo. You are standing on the integrity of God's word that cannot fail. But if you just allow doctor's report to come on you, you will just see yourself emaciating till you become eyeballs. What am I saying? Hear my voice, people of God. The word of God is what should guide your convictions. Don't let any external thing be stronger or louder or bigger than the word of God in your life. That's how we stay in this wicked world, sir. That's how we stay protected from the report of the devil. So what do you do? If it is money you need, go and find out information about money. If it is wife you need, make a del deliberate demand to see the scriptures that speak about wife. Why are you behaving like the Bible is outdated? When last did you open your Bible for yourself to read God's word and promises to you? Yes, we must never become too touch for the Bible. Glory to God. Can we do something together spiritual here? Put your right foot forward. Begin to prophesy over your life. 60 seconds. Begin to prophesy what you see. Somebody say, I see success. I see prosperity. I see recovery. I see recovery. For my family, I prophesy. More days to my life, more life to my years. I prophesy healing and health in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that all is well with me. I prophesy my in identity, my security, my insanity, my prosperity, my posterity. All that concerns me is secured in Christ. My identity, my security, my integrity is unsolved. I no longer look at things that are wrong. We behold, we are transformed to the image that we see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say a better amen. Please, before we take our seats in prayer, I want to just do something. Can you give us this scripture? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He said, while we behold him in a glass, we are transformed, we are changed to the same image that we look at. You only change to what you are looking at, not, not what you wish. It's what you are looking at. If you wish to be a success, but you are looking at failure, you become a failure, not the success you wish. If wishes were horses, beggars will also fly. See what it says. Let's read everybody. One, two, go. Look at what it says. But we all, everybody, one, two, go. But we all with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. That's who you are. You are the glory of the Lord. He says, are changed into the same image from one level of glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Please let me write a little. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, what does this mean? This means that what you look at is what you become. This means what you continue to look at is what you will become. If you are looking at the glory of God, you will become the glory of God. If you are looking at the shame of your life, you will become the shame of your life. I want us to today declare that from today, my pictures are changing. I'm seeing the glory of God manifested in my... Can we make an intelligent conversation in 60 seconds? Can I have you pray? Can I have you concentrate on your prayers right now and not be distracted? That I behold the glory of God in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift, lift up your voice and make a prayer and declaration that I am transformed to the glory, the image that I see. The transformational power of God's word. We are dealing with transformation this month and I want us to pay attention to it. It is when you are changed inside that your outside can change. It is when you are transformed inside that your, manifest your expectations can manifest. It is what you are inside that will manifest on the outside. Father, we receive grace this morning to see a mega church. We see a mega house. We see a mega ministry. We see that you are working in us mightily. A great choir. A great minstrel. A great household of God. Lord, this morning we receive your grace. That Lord, no one here will die prematurely. No one here will die before time. That no death burial this year. None whatsoever. Rather, everyone shall leave. The ones that were small before become big. A little one becomes a mighty nation. Amongst us, those that were despised, begin to receive jobs, begin to receive ideas, begin to receive successes. In the name of Jesus, thank you precious Father. In Jesus name we pray. Can I hear your believing? Amen.